Do you ever struggle with doubts, questions, or worries? We've all been there, haven't we? Although we don't have all the answers, I believe there are some things we can know beyond a shadow of a doubt, things we can believe with complete confidence, even in the most uncertain and unsettling times. As I began thinking about the things I know for sure about the God I love, I was inspired to write a song called This I Know For Sure. It's the theme song for our study. I'll be sharing the song with you at the end of our time together today. The chorus of this song lifts up five biblical assurances that lead to an unshakable faith. I call them landmarks of the faith, truths that enable us to trust God with all of our hearts and follow Christ without compromise. As believers, these are truths we can affirm with certainty, regardless of our culture, how we grew up, or where we go to church. Our study leads us in exploring these five landmarks using the Bible as our textbook. Along the way, we'll meet people from the Bible who, like us, struggled with doubts and questions and still chose to trust God and His promises. We'll also meet a few who miss God's direction because we want to learn from them too, amen? This week, we've already begun our journey with the first landmark, there is a God in heaven. And it's my prayer that as we wrap up our study of this landmark today, we'll come to the place where we choose to put our complete and total confidence in our Heavenly Father, a God who is both personal and powerful. Let's explore God's Word together. Welcome, ladies, to our first session of This I Know For Sure. Today, we're going to explore the first of five landmarks, There Is A God In Heaven. And I'm praying that as we unpack this foundational truth, we will find that we trust God more and that we look at His Word and that it will make all the difference in our lives so our hearts will be touched and changed. Now, before we go any further, can we dedicate this time to Jesus and talk to Him for a moment? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for your presence here with us today. What an honor and privilege it is to study your word. Thank you that your word goes all the way to the very depths of our hearts. God, we don't wanna go another moment without you and we don't want to miss you today. So confirm your word by the moving of your sweet Holy Spirit. And we give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' precious name we pray, amen. amen. Now. As I began to reflect on our first landmark, there is a God in heaven, I had to affirm this truth way down in the depths of my own heart. I had to say to myself, Babby, do you believe this with all of your heart? I mean, do you really believe this? You see, I'm a preacher's daughter, and so I've been going to church since nine months before I was born, all right? <laughs> And so I've always known about God and I've always believed in God. But when life is hard and temptations arise, do I stake my life on the claim that there is a God in heaven? I mean, do I trust God with my whole heart regardless of how I feel? Do you trust God with your whole heart regardless of how you feel? It's a very important question to ask. And it leads to another very important question. Do I really believe God's word? I mean, from the table of contents all the way back to the maps, including the, <laughs> all the way back to the maps, including the pictures. <laughs> Amen. Do you believe every word that God has spoken? Do you trust God with your whole heart, regardless of how you feel? Well, your answers to these questions reveals a lot about your confidence in God. So this week in your homework assignment, you've been exploring the truth that there is a God in heaven. He is still on his throne and we can have complete confidence in him. In other words, we can believe in God, but we must also believe God. This God who is faithful to do exactly as he said he would do. This God that we serve is a trustworthy God, and he will do exactly as he has said in his word. Now, specifically, we have seen that we can be confident in God's providence, his power, his presence, and his plan. And along the way, we studied the stories of King Asa, Daniel, and Leah. 
And we concluded the week by considering how and why our confidence is in Christ and Christ alone. Now today, I want us to focus on this man by the name of Daniel. We want to zero in on his amazing story and his amazing faith that this man had in God. I mean, this man's faith never wavered in the face of trouble. He did not wonder if there was a God who would deliver him from the lion's den, but this man staked his entire life on what he believed. Would you agree with me that this is the kind of faith that you want to have? Amen. This is the kind of faith that I want to have. You remember that Daniel was a man of great character and he found favor with God and with kings because of his ability to conduct himself in governmental affairs. In fact, King Darius was so impressed with Daniel's integrity and his dedication to service that he planned to put Daniel over his entire kingdom, the entire kingdom of Babylon. Now, Daniel was one of three administrators and he planned to put Daniel over his kingdom. And of course, there were his naysayers. There were his enemies, other administrators who were insanely jealous of Daniel and they schemed to have him killed. Now let's go to the book of Daniel and let's read his story in Daniel chapter six, beginning in verse four and let's continue through verse eight. So the governors and satraps sought to find some charge against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they could find no charge or fault because he was faithful, nor was there any error or fault found in him. Then these men said, we shall not find any charge against this Daniel unless we find it against him concerning the law of his God. So these governors and satraps thronged before the king and said thus to him, King Darius live forever. All the governors of the kingdom, the administrators and satraps, the counselors and advisors have consulted together to establish a royal statute and to make a firm decree that whoever petitions any God or man for 30 days, except you, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions. Now, O king, establish the decree and sign the writing so it cannot be changed according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which does not alter. Now, before we go any further, I want us to pause right here, but keep your place right here in Daniel chapter six, and we'll continue reading in just a moment. But I want us to go back to verse five and read this again. We shall not find any charge against this Daniel unless we find it against him concerning the law of his God. Can you see that no ground is sacred to your enemies? Amen. It was true back then, and it's true today, that whenever you want to do something for God, you're going to always have opposition. Amen. Isn't that right? Amen. But thank God for his word. I love Romans chapter 7, verse 21, that says, when a man wants to do good, evil is always going to be present. But listen to Romans chapter 8, verse 31. If God is for us, all right now, if God is for us, who can be against us? And I love 1 John chapter 4, verse 4, that puts it this way. Greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. So remember, when you encounter opposition, which you know you will, remember, you can stand your ground, you can pray, and you can trust God and his word. And so we learn from Daniel, this lion-hearted man of valor, this man who would rather have disobeyed the king's edict than dishonor his God. So let's go back to verse 9, Daniel chapter 6, verses 9 through 12. Therefore, King Darius signed the written decree. Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went home. And in his upper room, with his windows open towards Jerusalem, he knelt down on his knees three times that day and prayed and gave thanks before his God, as was his custom since early days. Then these men assembled and found Daniel praying and making supplication before his God. And they went before the king and spoke concerning the king's decree. Have you not signed a decree that every man who petitions any God or man within 30 days except you, O king, shall be cast into a den of lions? The king answered and said, the thing is true, according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which does not alter. Did you notice that even after this edict had been decreed, Daniel not only defied this decree, he did so openly and with the same fervor that he had always demonstrated. 
He continued to pray three times a day towards Jerusalem, his homeland. He even fashioned a room in his home for this beautiful act of devotion. Now, nowadays we have rooms set aside in our homes for various things that we love to do, hobbies and things that we enjoy. Some people might have a theater in their house for enjoying their favorite movies. You might have a room designated to crafts and, and, and hobbies. I have a friend that has a room dedicated to his extensive Elvis collection. <laughs> right down to the sequin studded jumpsuit. <laughs> I have a recording studio in my home dedicated to recording music. But Daniel gives us a beautiful example here of what it looks like to set aside a space in your home specifically for meeting with God. It can be just a small, simple corner uh, of your home, a, a simple chair where you can go on a daily basis and spend time alone with God. And so Daniel was not ashamed of this God that he loved. He was so faithful in this devotion. You see, ladies, Daniel believed with his whole heart that there is a God in heaven who is much bigger, much greater than any situation that we might face. This kind of belief is, is the kind of belief that we need, immovable, unshakable kind of belief. Well, Daniel's enemies knew that this man would not defy his God, so their plan was going exactly as they wanted it to go. They ran quickly to the king and they saw to it that Daniel would put his life on the line just for what he believed. Let's go back to Daniel chapter 6 verses 13 through 19 and see what happens here with Daniel's life. So they answered and said before the king, that Daniel, who is one of the captives from Judah, does not show due regard to you, O king, or for the decree that you have signed, but makes his petitions three times a day. And the king, when he heard these words, was greatly displeased with himself and set his heart on Daniel to deliver him. And he labored till the going down of the sun to deliver him. Then these men approached the king and said to the king, Know, O king, that it is the law of the Medes and Persians that no decree or statute which the king establishes may be changed. So the king gave the command and they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. But the king spoke saying to Daniel, your God whom you serve continually will deliver you. What a powerful statement. What a powerful statement for this pagan king to make. You see, Daniel's testimony and his faith in God was very well established. He was not an undercover believer, but he put his faith out there for everybody to see. He put his faith on what we would call it, when I was growing up, we would say it like this. He put his faith out there on Front Street. <laughs> Amen. Out there on Front Street for everybody to see. You see, King Darius was taking notes on Daniel. He observed his conversation, his behavior, his character. May I ask you today, who's taking notes on you? Who's taking notes on you? Would it, would it be a, an unsafe spouse, uh, maybe a, a child who is observing your conversation, your behavior? What about an unsaved coworker or maybe that clerk at the corner store? You see, we never know how our quiet act of devotion will impact the lives of others. People are taking notes on you and they're watching your walk. They're watching how you walk and how you talk before God and others. As much as the king wanted to help Daniel, there was nothing he could do. His hands were tied. His edict, as we would say, was signed, sealed, and delivered. Yes, and Daniel was sentenced to the lion's den, and into the lion's den this man went. They placed a stone over the entrance of the lion's den, and the king sealed it with his ring, which meant that Daniel's situation could not be changed. Under Babylonian law, once a king signs an edict, once this edict is made into law, even the king himself could not reverse it. Well, it goes without saying that it was a very long night for King Darius. This man did not eat a bite. He did not sleep a wink, but as soon as the sun rose, he ran down to the lion's den to see what had become of Daniel. Let's go now to Daniel chapter 6, verses 20 through 24. And when he came to the den, he cried out with a lamenting voice to Daniel. The king spoke, saying to Daniel, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God whom you serve continually been able to deliver you from the lions? When Daniel said to the king, O king, live forever. My God sent an angel and shut the lion's mouth so that they may not hurt me because I was found innocent before him. 
And also, O king, I have done no wrong before you. Now the king was exceedingly glad for him and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den and no injury whatsoever was found on him because he believed in God. And the king gave the command and they brought those men who had accused Daniel and cast them into the den of lions, them, their children and their wives. And the lions overpowered them and broke all their bones into pieces before they ever came to the bottom of the den. Wow, after having spent an entire night in this den with lions and an angel, Daniel came out the next morning without so much as a scratch on him. Now, as dramatic as this miraculous story is, I think the best part is the ending because it's here that we see the effects of Daniel's faith because Daniel remained faithful, believing that God would deliver him when his life was on the line. Others observe his life and they had the opportunity to come to believe in the one true God as well. Let's go to Daniel chapter six, verses 25 through 28. Then King Darius wrote to all the peoples, nations, and languages that dwell in the earth, peace be multiplied to you. I make a decree that in every dominion of my kingdom, men must tremble and fear before the God of Daniel. For he is the living God and steadfast forever. His kingdom is the one which shall not be destroyed and his dominion shall endure to the end. He delivers and rescues and he works signs and wonders in heaven and earth. Who has delivered Daniel from the power of the lions? So this Daniel prospered in the reign of Darius and in the reign of Cyrus the Persian. Wow, what a great declaration that this pagan king makes to Daniel's God. This is a powerful declaration. What Daniel's enemies intended for his demise, God turned it around so that it worked for Daniel's good. And here we are today still talking about this great man and this great God that he served. So what's the moral of the story, my friend? What's the bottom line? That you and I would know God like Daniel knew God. Amen. The heart of the matter is, is that God is looking for people that will have a strong confidence in him. God is looking for a people who will stand up for right and righteousness, even when their life is on the line, who will stand up in the midst of persecution, who will stand up even in the midst of troubled times, regardless of the circumstances they face. He's looking for you, my friend. And I love Second Chronicles 16, 9, that says, for the eyes of the Lord roam to and fro throughout the earth, seeking a heart that is faithful to him that he might fully support it. You know, when I sat down to think about this study, it was inspired by a beautiful song called This I Know For Sure. And it contains the five, uh, the five themes that we're going to address across this study that we're going to take over these next few weeks. And so as I sing the chorus, I want you to listen for those five landmarks of faith. And today we're talking about there is a God in heaven. And uh, you'll rehearse this because before it's over, I'm gonna even ask you to join in with me and become my choir and we'll <laughs> encourage one another in the Lord. But I think this is a great way to end our, stu our study together today. And I pray that these words will encourage your heart. When life is uncertain, questions come and go. I'll not be moved by how I feel, but trust in what I know. There is a God in heaven, and I am in his plan. Forsake me never. My life is in His hands. His boundless love will lead me as long as time endures. Oh, this I know. This I know for sure when the days are cloudy skies are filled with rain 
The storm will soon pass over And I'll remember once again There is a God in heaven And I am in His plan He will forsake me never My life is in His hands His boundless love will lead me as long as time endures, oh, this I know. This I know. I know for sure. Amen. Amen. Amen.